Hi there. Another potato video, another TPS video. I wanted to just quickly go over harvesting potato berries for future processing into TPS and how to tell, broadly speaking, if your TPS berries are ripe and ready to harvest because TPS berries are green and hard and don't give a lot of obvious ripeness signals but there are some sort of telltale signs uh, that a batch of berries are ripe and one of the telltale signs is if they've already fallen off the plant you know they're ripe or either, either they fell off on their own accord or something knocked them off and they're not going to get any more benefit from the plant so you might as well harvest them but um, I'll show you so this guy if I pull on it it's holding pretty well to this um, to the flower sign still so this guy is not the potato is not ready to let this guy go it still wants to put some energy into this berry so I'm gonna leave it okay Here's another one. Doesn't want to come, okay? You can kind of see some of these look just like that berry and some of them have kind of a purplish cast. That actually doesn't really tell you anything. Um, most likely that means that the potato in question, the mother plant, has anthocyanin genes. Either it might have a purple, like this particular potato is Shetland black number four which is just my own uh, designation for it. it's not a black potato it's actually a pink potato uh, it's a descendant of Shetland black and it's actually the oldest TPS line that I still have going um, and I may drop it the reason I've been keeping it is sort of I am a little bit sentimental about Shetland black and uh, it's sort of it's a potato that Rebsy Fairholm really loves and talks about in her book, which I highly recommend and have recommended before. Please read Rebsy Fairholm's book, The Lost Art of Potato Breeding. And uh, come back and talk to us, Rebsy. Um, so the other, the other reason I keep it is because it's super fertile. There, it just produces a ton of berries. So as we're going along here, um, here we go. This is, I'm like two feet into the row. So here's another um, batch of berries. These ones are not ready, right? When they're ready, like this one, see, it just fell right off into my hand. Okay, and then here's one on the ground. And here is one that either fell off and slugs got two, or a vole got two, or both. And kind of the narrative that Tom Wagner and others talk about with potato berries is like the the wild potatoes seed distribution strategy is to produce these fruits that smell very fruity and delicious and put them very close to the ground to encourage rodents to harvest them basically and carry them off but they are filled with glycoalkaloids so they are bitter and toxic and so when the rodent tries to eat the the berry it realizes it's toxic it drops the berry and then that berry has been carried away from its mother plant and all of those seeds then rot into the soil and potentially sprout that's the theory I don't have any evidence for or against that theory but okay so you see I just pulled this back and here's a bunch of berries on the ground. So those are ripe. Now as in far, and there's a bunch even deeper. So I, can, I'm, I noticed that a bunch of berries were falling. And so I figured I should, ought to come in here and harvest. So, and then the other thing, I got it, oop, see, just fell off. So if we shake the tree, we're going to get some berries. Get out of my way leaf so I'm kind of just harvesting you know the drops and the obvious 
uh, obvious uh, ripe ones. Um, and then I'm, I'll come back later and do a second harvest. Initially, I was thinking 2018 was going to be a really lousy uh, berry producing year because it was so hot. And uh, th this planting was just the flower stalks were coming up and then aborting, you know, before the flowers opened when they're at a very early stage. But then potatoes have a lot of resiliency and they came along and just started producing and producing um, when it got a little cooler. So there's a ton of berries in this planting um, on a couple of lines and Shetland number four here is one of my lines that's, I'm gonna get a lot of berries out of this, you know? And so it's ideal if you pick ripe berries, you know, and let them ripen as much as they can on the plant. But if frost is threatening, you don't want your berries to freeze. Most, that's gonna really kill a lot of the seeds, if not all of the seeds, depending on if the berry freezes completely or if it just gets partially frozen. So, you, you know, if you have a hard frost coming and you've got berries on your plants, just harvest them, bring them inside, leave them, you know, in a warm place to ripen. You can get a lot of good seed out of underripe harvested berries, um, but, if you're out in the field and you can't tell if the berries are ripe, you know, if they're falling off the plant, they're ripe. Or if they pull, come off the, the, the flower stalk uh, with just the minest amount of, minutest amount of pressure, then they're ripe and you might as well just harvest them. Okay, I kind of scared it, but this slug was just feasting on that berry. So slugs are happy to eat your TPS. So once they start, falling you better pick them up i mean i'm not going to worry about that berry i had to switch to a bigger container and i'm only about a quarter of the way through with this shetland number four he super fertile well got a pretty decent harvest had to switch to the beach bucket and i did sort out these guys which are the damaged berries, like some of them have just big scars on them. I can find a scarred one. But a lot of them just have these little freckles, which I'm pretty sure is stink bug bites, basically. But some of them have like these sort of splits and scars. Those are going to dry down and start to spoil much more quickly than, you know your berries that are more intact. So if you leave them all to after ripen together, these are gonna spoil. And then when you have this many berries, you're, you're talking about clouds and clouds of fruit flies and maggots. And you know, my wife is very, very tolerant, but you know, when there's like a huge clouds of Fruit flies and maggots crawling all over the place in, in inside the house. She can get a little sarcastic. So, um, yeah, it's best when you have this many berries to sort them fairly carefully. So, of the clean berries from Shetland number four, that's four pounds, 11 ounces. And then... can just pour these damaged ones in and that's almost so that's 14 ounces of the damaged berries so that's five pounds of five pounds of potato berries which is a pretty healthy uh, harvest um, and I mean obviously this many potato berries is hundreds of thousands of true potato seeds right which is more vastly more true potato seeds of any one strain than I could ever use so I will be processing these 
and probably I'm going to donate them to Curzio Caravati and they can go into the beginner seed train for you know 2019 um, because I have benefited hugely from the Kenosha Potato Project seed train so it's it's nice to be able to have TPS to give back and so the beginners train is for people who have not grown TPS before and you know so they can just take some TPS from the train without having to put some back whereas the um, the main train is for people that are already producing their own TPS so it's like a normal seed train where you take some out that from other growers and you put some in to replace it uh, but like this is so much seed that I'm happy to give it away to people who'd like to start uh, through the seed train, through the Kenosha Potato Project. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful for people, and uh, thank you very much for watching.